Chapters 10 through 13 of the Gospel According to John from the American Bible Union's New Testament. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. Chapters 10 through 13 of the Gospel According to John. Chapter 10 Verily, verily, I say to you, he that enters not through the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that enters in through the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has put forth all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, because they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spoke Jesus to them, but they understood not what things they were which he spoke to them. Therefore said Jesus to them again, Verily, verily, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If any one enter in through me, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I came that they may have life, and that they may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep, and flees. And the wolf catches them, and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees, because he is a hireling, and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and am known by mine, as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one flock, one shepherd." For this the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it again. This commandment I received from my Father. Again there arose a division among the Jews because of these words, and many of them said, He has a demon and is mad, why do ye hear him? Others said, these are not the words of one that has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And there came the feast of the dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the porch of Solomon. The Jews therefore came around him and said to him, How long dost thou hold us in doubt? If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye do not believe, the works that I do in my Father's name, these bear witness of me. But ye do not believe, for ye are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish, nor shall any one pluck them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews therefore took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, being man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may learn and know that the Father is in me, and I in the Father." Therefore they sought again to seize him, and he went forth out of their hand. And he went away again beyond the Jordan, to the place where John was at first immersing, and there he abode. And many came to him and said, John indeed wrought no sign, 
but all things that John spoke of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Chapter 11 Now a certain one was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, from the village of Mary and Martha her sister. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment, and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. The sisters therefore sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And Jesus, hearing it, said, This sickness is not for death, but for the sake of the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When therefore he heard that he was sick, he then abode two days in the place where he was. Then after this he says to the disciples, Let us go into Judea again. The disciples say to him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any one walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But if any one walk in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things said he, and after this he says to them, Lazarus our friend has fallen asleep, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Therefore his disciples said, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be restored. But Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he said it of taking rest in sleep. Then therefore Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that ye may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore said Thomas, who is called Didymus, to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Having come, therefore, Jesus found that he had already been four days in the tomb. Now Bethany was nigh to Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Therefore Martha, when she heard that Jesus is coming, went and met him, but Mary sat in the house. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But even now I know that whatever thou shalt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus says to her, Thy brother will rise again. Martha says to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes on me shall never die. Believest thou this? She says to him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, who comes into the world. And having said this, she went away and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, the teacher is come, and calls for thee. And she, when she heard it, rises quickly and comes to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews, therefore, who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goes to the tomb to weep there. Mary, therefore, when she came where Jesus was, seeing him, fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Jesus, therefore, when he saw her weeping and the Jews weeping who came with her, groaned in spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have ye laid him? They say to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. The Jews, therefore, said, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind have caused even that this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself comes to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus says, Take away the stone. The sister of him that was dead, Martha, says to him, Lord, by this time he is offensive, for he has been dead four days. Jesus says to her, 
said i not to thee that if thou believe thou shalt see the glory of god so they took away the stone and jesus raised his eyes upward and said father i thank thee that thou didst hear me and i knew that thou always hearest me but for the sake of the multitude standing around i said it that they might believe that thou didst send me and having thus spoken he cried with a loud voice lazarus come forth and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin jesus says to them loose him and let him go many therefore of the jews who came to mary and saw what he did believed on him but some of them went away to the pharisees and told them what jesus did therefore the chief priests and the pharisees gathered a council and said what do we seeing that this man works many signs if we let him thus alone all will believe on him and the romans will come and take away both our place and nation and a certain one of them caiaphas being high priest that year said to them ye know nothing nor do ye consider that it is expedient for us that one man die for the people and not the whole nation perish and this he spoke not of himself but being high priest that year he prophesied that jesus should die for the nation and not for the nation only but that also he should gather together into one the children of god that were scattered abroad therefore from that day forth they took counsel together to put him to death jesus therefore no longer walked openly among the jews but departed thence to the country near to the wilderness to a city called ephraim and there continued with his disciples and the passover of the jews was at hand and many went up to jerusalem out of the country before the passover that they might purify themselves they sought therefore for jesus and said among themselves as they stood in the temple what think ye that he will not come to the feast now the chief priests and the pharisees had given a commandment that if any one knew where he was he should make it known that they might seize him chapter twelve therefore jesus six days before the passover came to bethany where lazarus was who had been dead whom jesus raised from the dead they therefore made him a supper there and martha served and lazarus was one of those who reclined at table with him then mary took a pound of ointment of pure spikenard very costly and anointed the feet of jesus and wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment then says one of his disciples judas iscariot simon's son who was about to betray him why was not this ointment sold for three hundred denaries and given to the poor this he said not because he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had the bag and bore what was put therein then said jesus let her alone she has kept it to the day of my preparation for burial for the poor ye always have with you but me ye have not always a great multitude of the jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not because of jesus only but that they might see lazarus also whom he raised from the dead but the chief priests consulted that they might put lazarus also to death because by reason of him many of the jews went away and believed on jesus on the morrow a great multitude that had come to the feast hearing that jesus is coming to jerusalem took branches of the palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord the king of israel and jesus having found a young ass sat thereon as it is written fear not daughter of zion behold thy king comes sitting on an ass's colt these things his disciples understood not at the first but when jesus was glorified then they remembered that these things were written of him and that they did these things to him the multitude therefore that was with him when he called lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness for this the multitude also met him because they heard that he had wrought this sign the pharisees therefore said among themselves perceive ye that ye avail nothing behold the world is gone after him and there were certain greeks of those who come up to worship at the feast 
These came therefore to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip comes and tells Andrew. Andrew and Philip come and tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say to you, except the grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it brings forth much fruit. He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any one serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any one serve me, him will the Father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then there came a voice out of heaven. I both have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The multitude, therefore, that stood by and heard, said that it thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not for my sake, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to me. This he said, signifying by what manner of death he should die. The multitude answered him, We heard out of the law that the Christ abides forever. And how sayest thou, The Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus therefore said to them, Yet a little while is the light among you. Walk while ye have the light, that darkness may not overtake you. And he that walks in the darkness knows not whither he goes. While ye have the light, believe on the light, that ye may become sons of light. These things spoke Jesus, and departed, and hid himself from them. But though he had wrought so many signs before them, they did not believe on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who believed our report, and to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes, and has hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah, because he saw his glory, and spoke of him. Yet even of the rulers many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees they did not acknowledge him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the glory of men more than the glory of God. And Jesus cried and said, He that believes on me believes not on me, but on him who sent me. And he that beholds me beholds him who sent me. I have come a light into the world, that whoever believes on me may not abide in the darkness. And if any one hear my words and keep them not, I do not judge him. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I spoke, that shall judge him in the last day. Because I spoke not from myself, but the Father who sent me, he has given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is everlasting life. What things I speak, therefore, as the Father has said to me, so I speak. Chapter 13 And before the feast of the Passover, Jesus, knowing that his hour has come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, loved them to the end. And supper being served, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, knowing that the Father has given all things into his hands, and that he came out from God and is going to God, he rises from the supper and lays aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. After that he pours water into the basin, and began to wash the feet of his disciples, and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. He comes, therefore, to Simon Peter, and Peter says to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. 
Peter says to him, Never shalt thou wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter says to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus says to him, He that has bathed has no need save to wash the feet, but is wholly clean, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew his betrayer, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. When therefore he had washed their feet, he took his garments, and reclining again at table, said to them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me the teacher and the master, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then the master and the teacher washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example, that as I did to you, ye also should do. Verily, verily, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his Lord, nor one that is sent greater than he who sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all, I know whom I chose. But that the scripture might be fulfilled, he that eats the loaf with me lifted up his heel against me. Even now I tell you before it comes to pass, that when it comes to pass ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that receives whomsoever I send receives me, and he that receives me receives him who sent me. Having said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say to you, that one of you will betray me. The disciples therefore looked one on another, doubting of whom he spoke. And there was reclining in Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. To him therefore Simon Peter beckons, and says to him, Say who it is of whom he speaks. And he, leaning back on Jesus' breast, says to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answers, He it is to whom I shall give the morsel when I have dipped it. And having dipped the morsel, he gives it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. And after the morsel, then entered Satan into him. Jesus therefore says to him, What thou doest, do quickly. And no one at the table knew for what intent he spoke this to him. For some thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus said to him, Buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the morsel, went immediately out, and it was night. When therefore he was gone out, Jesus says, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will straightway glorify him. Children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, Whither I go ye cannot come. So now I say to you, A new commandment I give to you, that ye love one another as I loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one toward another. Simon Peter says to him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterward. Peter says to him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thee. Jesus answers, Wilt thou lay down thy life for me? Verily, verily, I say to thee, a cock will not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. The End of Chapters 10 through 13 of the Gospel According to John from the American Bible Union's New Testament. Recording by Mark Penfold.